gun smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> She, Doc. Well, she's going to be all right, ain't she? Your wife is a sick woman, Aaron. A very sick woman. She don't seem hardly ripe. Lucy always been strong. She don't get sick. Well, she's sick now. Whatever have you been giving her? Oh, giving her pot herb tea. Strong. Real strong. All cured us up before. But it's not going to cure her now, Aaron. Pouring all that stuff down here has nearly killed her. You fix her up, Doc. <laughs> it's your trade, ain't it? Uh, it'll be a day or two before we'll know anything. Before I can even do anything. What do you mean? Well, she's too weak after all that stuff that you've been giving her to, to stand an operation. I'll have to build her up. Operation? Well, there's, there's just a chance that it'll, that it'll save her, Aaron. Something's got to relieve that pressure. You won't take a knife to Lucy? That's the only thing I know to do. It, it may not work. I, I can't promise you that it will, but she'll die, sure. Oh, no, no, no. You ain't going to take no knife to Lucy, Doc. No, she ain't that sick. I tell you, if you go on feeding her those herbs, she'll die. Well, you cut into her, she'll die, sure. No, no, Doc, get away from that door. Doc, I'm going in there and I'll take care of her. Are you listening to me? Your wife's got one chance. It isn't a very good chance, but she's got one. And I'm not going to let you take it away from her if I have to keep you out of there with a gun. Oh, Doc, you got no right. I've got no right to let her die either. I'm going to send for the marshal. He'll stop you. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. Jed. Jed? Yeah? Come in here. Is it Ma? No, son. Your mother's all right. So far. What's Doc got the gun for? Oh, he won't let me go in there with your Ma. He wants to take a knife to her. A knife? I'm not here to hurt anybody, boy. I just want to try to save your mother's life. Now, I want you to go into town and bring back the marshal. The marshal? Yeah, that's what I said. Somebody's got to settle this thing. Paul? Yeah, you go along. Bring the marshal, Jed. Law will protect a man's rights. But what will happen to Ma? Go along, boy. Go along. Now, nothing will happen to you, Ma. Nothing going to happen to her. Now, that's a fact. Go on, Jed. You get the marshal out here. Don't let him waste no time. If you say so, Pa. I say so. Go on now. I'll take care of your Ma. I aim to take care of her. Gun or no gun. You can leave your horses here. I'll take care of them. Oh, thanks, boy. <sighs> All right, come on, Chester. Yes, I'm 
Glad you're here, Matt. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. I want you to now, Matt, I tell you, he's going to let his All wife right, tell hold on a minute, but, one at a time. Well, he's got no right, it's Martin. It's more than a question of right, no man. It's woman's right. Woman I said, hold, hold on. on. Now, Aaron, you want me to straighten this thing out? Well, sure I do. Well, I can't do it with both of you talking at once. Now, you go on out on the porch with Chester while I talk to Doc. I'll call you in in a few minutes. Well, now, Mark... Go on, now, now, go on. I gotta get a few things straight. You go with him, Chester. All right, what's going Come on, Aaron. Now, Doc, what's this all about? What are you doing holding a gun on a man in his own house? Well, I guess it looks crazy, Matt, but it was the only thing I could think of. Well, did he threaten you? Well, he threatened the life of that woman in there. His wife's got to have care, Matt, whether Aaron agrees to it or not. What's this business about a knife? Well, uh, I've got to operate, Matt. There's something in, inside there causing a terrible pressure. And if it isn't relieved, it'll kill her. Uh, have you done this before? Are you sure that you can save her? Uh, no, Matt, uh, I'm not. I haven't done it before either. Uh, but I've read about it. And I can tell you this. She's got no chance at all if I don't try it. Now, that's all I'm sure of. And it's pretty chancy, isn't it? With a husband refusing his permission. Well, maybe so. I'd rather have his permission, of course. I'd like to have you with me, too, Matt. But I tell you, I'll find some way to do this. Whether you stand behind me or not. I can't let that woman die because of a lot of fear and superstition. Well, Doc, I, I don't know. Uh, can she talk? Is she conscious? She's just barely. Well, can I see her for a minute? Oh, I guess so. Only a minute, though. All right. Mrs. Middleton? Lucy? This is Marshal Dillon. He wants to see you for a minute. Marshal. Miss Middleton? Uh, I want to ask you... You know what's going on here. You, you know what Doc wants to do. You know your husband's against it. Yeah. I, know. I know. Well, can you tell me, do you want Doc to go ahead? Uh, yes, Marshal. Are you sure about that? Yes. Anything's better than this. I can't stand it. Oh, it's, it's all right, Lucy. Don't you worry. Come on, now. Yeah. Well, man, I sure hope you're right, Doug. How can I help? Well, I want you to get her into my office. You can help me with that. Well, isn't that going to make things even worse, carrying her out of here away from her husband? I can't help that. i got to build her up for a couple of days. If I leave her here, Aaron will go right on pouring that witch's brew into her. She can't stand to get any weaker. All right, All right Doc. I got Chester to hitch up a wagon. Uh, and I'll tell Aaron. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Well, Marshal, you going to clear him out of here? No, Aaron, I'm not. Your wife needs help, and Doc's the only man to give it to her, and I've got to take his word for it. You've got no right to I'm force I'm taking them. the right, Aaron. Now, Doc says he's got to take care of her in his office for a couple of days. Well, he can't take her away. Yes, he can, Aaron, and I'll tell you how it's going to be. You can stay right here calling us all names, or you can come along and help us move her. Now, that's up to you. Lucy, you need any carrying? I'll do the carrying. All right, then. Come on, Chester. Let's get a wagon. saw you take more than one, two drinks before. I've got my laws to drink. Now you just go on pour it. You're the boy. You got cause to drink. I'm the man to drink with you. 
That's good, mister. Man ought to have somebody to drink with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all right if Sam pours me one, too. <laughs> Pour him one, Sam. All right. Hey, you sound like you got big trouble, mister. I'm always ready to listen to a man's troubles when he's, he's buying my drink. Don't even let me see her. My wife, Lucy. Oh, keeping a man from his wife. That, that, that ain't right. No, it ain't, mister. It sure ain't. It's what I say. Ain't right. Well, where they got her? Got her up to docks for two days. Can't even see her. Oh, well, that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing. Oh, say, my, my glass is empty. Sam, fill him up, Sam. All right, Aaron. It's a terrible thing. It's what it yeah. is, all right. Oh, sure. And tomorrow, tomorrow Doc's going to cut into her. Cut into her? Are you going to let him do that? Well, to your woman? No. No, I ain't. I ain't going to let any butcher and Doc do well, it. We can go right up there and get away. That's what we we got. We got plenty of help around here. You just buy these boys a drink, you got plenty of help. Hey, you fellas there? Hey, Doc, down the end of the bar. Come here. This man's buying. Is that right, Mr. That's right, I'm buying. He's buying. Doc, Doc has got this man's wife locked up in his office. Are we going to stand for that? Well, come on, then. Yeah, come on. Come you on yeah. I'll buy more drinks after, but yeah. right now we're going to get my Lucy away from that butcher and Doc. Right? Come on, now. What's your hurry? We're going to take Lucy away from that butcher and now You just stand back there. You're going to leave Lucy alone. Doc's the only chance she's oh, got. I'm going to get that butcher and Doc, and all these men going to help me. They say go and get Doc. Now, he's standing out of the way, Marsh. Not like it. Hey, what are you doing here? Pick him up, Sam. All right, Marshal. Hey, I guess it's figured you'd be siding with Doc. Now, you listen to me, all of you. There's some excuse for Aaron acting the way he did. I'm sorry I had to hit him, but the rest of you standing around here working him up to... Doc's me. got no call. I'm going to tell you something. There's not one of you that has the right to say anything about Doc anyway from Sunday. You got some rotten whiskey burning in your bellies and you're ready to take off like a pack of coyotes on the best man in this town. Well, he's been patching you up and saving your skins drunk and sober for money or for free ever since you can remember. For the first time you get a chance, you're howling at his heels. Now you listen to me, God! Any one of you makes another move, I'll sell it with my gun, not my fists. Now, go on. Get out of here, all of you. That was quite a speech, Matt. You want to have a beer and simmer down? No, thanks, Kitty. I, I better get up to Doc's, just in case. Matt, are you sure Doc's right about all this? You sure this is the right thing to do? No, Kitty, I'm not sure. But a man's got to take his stand. And I've got a back, Doc. I sure hope it proves out. I guess we'll know tomorrow. Yeah. We'll know tomorrow. Mr. Dillon, what do you suppose is going on up in Doc's office? We've been sitting on these steps here an awful long time. You can't do things like this in a hurry, Chester. Mm -hmm. Reckon not. Uh... 
Awful hot out here in the thumbnail, ain't it? Not as hot as it feels up in Doc's office. Mm, yes, you're right. Uh, Mr. Dillon, how come Miss Kitty's up there helping Doc? I, I mean, wouldn't there be some neighbor lady? No, Chester, there wouldn't be. The neighbor ladies don't approve of the operation. Or at least their husbands don't. It sure does beat all. You notice Aaron there, waiting across the street? Yeah, I see him. He took his eyes off Doc's window all morning. How would you, if it was your wife? No. Well, I did say, well, of course not. I would. Oh, there's Miss Kitty. Over a minute. Doc's finished. Lucy. What happened to Lucy? Oh, she's alive, Aaron. That's all I can tell you. You'll have to wait for Doc. He said he'd be out in a minute. Uh, Kitty, you look all done in. Yeah. I sure am. What is she going to pull through, Lucy? Is she going to pull through? Oh, honest, Aaron, I'll tell you if I know. You'll just have to wait for Doc. Uh, could I get you something, Miss Kitty? Some coffee or a drink, maybe? No, thanks, Chester. I, I'll just go along now. The air will fix me up. Oh, poor Miss Kitty. Oh, Doc... Doc. Doc, how is she? Well, Aaron, it's too soon to tell for sure, but uh, I think she came through very well. She's got a lot of courage. Well, is she going to make it, Doc? Is she going to get well? well? I think she is, Aaron, with time. A lot of time. But yes, I think she's got a good chance. Can I see her now? Just for a minute. And don't expect too much. She's, she's been through a lot. And don't talk to her. Just, just stand by there for me. Yeah, all right, Doc. Oh. Say, Doc. Yes, sir? Doc, I wasn't no help to you, I guess. Doc, I was afraid. Oh, I know, Aaron. Fear does terrible things to a man. But now, I, I want to thank you. Oh, it's all right, Aaron. Uh, you go on up there. Go on, you get up there and see her. All right, sir. Here, Doc, sit down. Looks like you could use some doctoring yourself. <laughs> yes, that was, that was a hard thing, man. It was a very hard thing. Except for Kitty, you didn't have much help, did you? No, not much. Just just you and Chester. And, uh, and I thank you. Yeah, well, nobody was making it easy for you, that's for certain. Oh, most of them didn't know any better. No, that's no help. No, it isn't. And I just wish we had some kind of a operation that would take care of it. Uh, what do you mean, Doc? I mean some kind of an operation that would... Cut out the fear and the ignorance and the superstition so that a doctor wouldn't be fighting two battles whenever he tries to save a life. Yeah. There had to be some knife that would cut all that out of a person. Yes, man, it would. Sure would. But it's one knife that I, I wouldn't mind using. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs>